I swear there are so many times that I plan a video a certain way in my head, but then when it comes to actually executing that video, it turns into something completely different than what I originally imagined. For this one though, I kind of walked right into it, I'm not gonna lie. What my intention was with this video was to do something a little more lighthearted. I've been making a ton of videos recently that revolve around dark, morbid, and often really sad topics. Which is my choice, of course, but I felt like I really needed to mix things up and make something that isn't so serious and heavy. I got this random idea to talk about an episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog that always creeped me out as a kid, but when it came to watching this episode again, I quickly remembered just how morbid this one is. With that being said, I'm not scrapping this idea in favor of something more positive, but I will say look forward to a tiny influx of happy videos every once in a while. I like covering morbid topics, but I feel like for the sake of my mental health, it's important for us to just have little happy nostalgic walks down memory lane every once in a while. Today though, we're looking at an episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog that I honestly forgot was this depressing. A majority of this episode is just so sad, and as a kid, I was so fixated on the fact that it creeped me out that I kind of overlooked how sad it really was. That's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, we're gonna check out an episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog that nearly broke my heart. Today we're looking at none other than Muted Muriel. <laughs> and pick me up a bottle of vinegar. Eustace, vinegar, vinegar. Muriel continues to plead with Eustace, just begging for his attention over and over again as he just sits there blatantly ignoring her. It's not until she raises her voice and shouts at him that he finally responds in his usual angry manner. She asks him, in a tone more polite than I would have been, to go to the store and get her a bottle of vinegar, and he just responds by grumbling for her to leave him alone as he turns on the TV and continues to ignore her. Muriel decides that she's had enough of him being rude to her, so she stands in front of the TV to get his attention. Get out of my way, woman! Is that the only thing you have to say to me? Nope. I'm hungry. Where's my food? Eustace, I don't think you're being very polite. <laughs> Who cares what you think? I think you'd care what I think. I'd care what you think if you said something worth thinking about. I think you're stubborn. Mm -hmm. Don't care. And I think you're being very nasty. Eustace just insists that he doesn't care what she thinks or says, and that he wishes someone would make a remote control to shut people off. Worry. I'm shutting myself off. I'm not speaking anymore. Listen to the TV all you want. You won't be hearing from me again. <laughs> Sorry, Courage. My voice isn't welcome in this house, so I'm keeping my thoughts to myself. Muriel walks off upset, and Eustace just laughs, saying that he's thankful that he finally got some peace and quiet. We cut over to the next day, where Eustace is just sitting at the table with an empty plate in front of him, holding his knife and fork like he's expecting food to just appear out of nowhere. He tells Courage to go figure out if Muriel's talking yet, because he wants to know if she's making his breakfast. Courage goes upstairs and we see Eustace leaving while complaining about the fact that he has to go out and pay for his breakfast. Courage calls Dr. Vindaloo to tell him what's going on to see if he can help. The big lady is silent? Ouch! She must be the one to explain the problem to me. Ouch! Put big lady on phone. 
If patient cannot describe problem to me, I cannot help. Cannot help at all. He says that if the silent one won't talk, then he cannot help her, and that she needs more than a doctor, she needs magic. This gives courage the idea to go on over to Shirley the medium to see if she can use her supernatural abilities to help. Courage explains what's going on and tries to see if her magic can help at all, and Shirley says that she will unleash powerful forces to make Muriel speak. She just needs to whip up a spell really quick. From deep below the planet's shell. Deeper than the deepest well. May forces rise to break the ground. And cause your Muriel to sound. <laughs> Courage thanks her and immediately gets up to leave, but once he reaches the curtain, she stops him, saying that she's not done yet. If your Muriel won't speak, much havoc will these forces wreak. Or in other words, it will not be pretty. <laughs> Courage starts to panic as he feels the ground begin to shake heavily around him. He runs outside to see the ground erupting with what seems to be a massive stone structure popping out of it. As the giant continues to ascend, we see its legs finally fall down, revealing it to be a sort of massive kaiju starfish that was lurking underneath the earth's crust. The beast begins using its millions of thin tube feet to sprawl away as Shirley warns Courage that he should probably get to Muriel before it does. I can provide speedy transportation for a fee. <laughs> Don't you have anything bigger? Shirley throws a unicycle at Courage, and he goes on his way, pedaling at full speed to catch up and hopefully pass the giant starfish. As he passes this thing, we get a glimpse of just how huge it really is. Watch where you're going, you fool! I love this clip right here so much because it's easy to miss, but there's a callback to a few episodes from season 1 of Courage in this scene. We see Jean Bon, the owner of the burger diner from the episode Heads of Beef running away from the starfish, along with the waitress from his restaurant and the customer that we see eating there in season 1. We also see Floyd from the episode Hothead, who's known for his extreme temper in that episode. And lastly, we also see Mildred, Bigfoot's mother, from the episode Courage Meets Bigfoot. Moving on from there, we see Courage arrive at the farm just seconds before the giant starfish. He falls down into the basement where he finds Muriel playing her sitar still, and just completely ignoring him. <laughs> will save the farm from getting destroyed. Will you quit that stupid hippie music? I'm trying to watch TV. The whole house continues to rumble as the massive monster draws near, eating everything in its wake. As it inches up to the house, minuscule in comparison, Courage drags Muriel outside to show her what's happening. She sees the monster, but doesn't really seem to care. She continues playing her sitar, seeming okay with the idea of being eaten by this giant monster. With not a second to spare and Muriel not responding to him, Courage makes the insane decision to walk right up to the monster and just throw himself on the ground in front of it, ready to be consumed by it. <laughs> Did I stop it with 
my voice? Courage hugs Muriel, and she tells him that she knows what she says matters to him. She promises that she will never stop talking again, and we cut to later that night where we see her scolding Eustace, telling him that from now on, when she talks, he's gonna listen. Got it? I said, is that clear? <laughs> this episode is one that really made me think. It made me think about myself, how I treat others, and how others treat me. That's what's very interesting about a show like Courage. On the surface, it's a wacky yet spooky kids cartoon that plays on tropes from classic horror films, but despite that, it never lacked an ability to lead you to a moral that'll really make you think. The core issue at the heart of this episode is Eustace completely neglecting his spouse and leading her to the point of giving up and shutting down as a result of his abuse. Eustace is a misogynistic jerk, and I can't imagine treating any human like that, but especially not my own wife. It's just really sad. He's a jerk for seemingly no reason. Muriel didn't do anything to him other than take care of him and be an absolute sweetheart. The least that he can do is go to the store and buy a bottle of vinegar. In all reality, I have to imagine that he's bottling up emotions that he's feeling towards a bigger problem that he refuses to talk about, and as a result, he ends up lashing out and hurting people that he feels the most comfortable around, such as Muriel. I mean, we all know that Eustace has a complicated history with his parents, especially his mother, but that doesn't excuse his behavior even for a second. I get having trauma as a result of your parents rubbing your face and the fact that they loved your brother more than you, but like, maybe not abuse your wife as a result of holding those feelings inside? Because that's super uncool. He needs to learn how to communicate when he needs some quiet time instead of hurting his wife's feelings in an effort to get her to just go away. What's even more sad than Eustace's awful behavior though is Muriel's reaction to it. It made me so sorrowful seeing her feel like she just didn't care about anything anymore. She was ready to let the monster consume her because she already felt so broken that it didn't even matter to her. As sad as that is, I can't blame her. She does everything she can to make sure that the house is nice for her family and that everything is well taken care of, but Eustace doesn't appreciate it for even a second. He just kind of expects her to do it, doesn't say thanks, refuses to help, and expects her to stomach him treating her like garbage all the meanwhile. It's just really scummy how he is, and it really hurts seeing her put up with his crap. It made my heart happy to see that she hadn't given up on everything though. As much as being Eustace's wife hurts, being Courage's doggy mom softens the blow for her. She loves Courage with all of her heart, and he feels the same way. We've seen Courage endure some massive torment for Muriel in the past, and this episode is no different. He was ready to make the ultimate sacrifice to save her, and that just speaks volumes to Courage's character and his love for Muriel. However, if you look at this from a different angle, the symbolism here is actually pretty heavy. In the middle of the dispute between Eustace and Muriel is Courage, who is also affected by it in the sense that he sees how she's treated, how she's affected by it, and how the effects changed how Muriel treats him. It kind of felt like a child in the middle of a nasty divorce between their parents. It almost seemed as if Courage was a bit confused by what was going on, hence why he tried calling Dr. Vindaloo for help. Like, maybe he was thinking that her not talking could have been result of a medical condition, not understanding that she was choosing to not talk because Eustace was being an abusive jerk towards her. Though I will admit that we know that's not the case, considering that Courage himself went to Shirley saying that all of this was Eustace's fault, it's worth pointing out that the symbolism here, and at a few other points, is comparable to the struggles of a kid who's going through his parents getting a divorce. We end up seeing Courage's attempt to reach out to the doctor is unsuccessful, so he reaches out for magical help and ends up stumbling upon something more dark than he could ever fathom. This could definitely be compared to a child struggling through divorce, but in a more generalized sense, it's a definite symbolization of reaching for an unhealthy answer to a problem that you have. 
The answer Courage got was one packed with destruction and casualties along the way, which can be the case for a lot of unhealthy answers to problems, or even mechanisms to cope with that same problem. Lastly, the symbolism at the end of Courage throwing himself in harm's way to finally get Muriel's help. This speaks volumes. Courage begged for Muriel to talk. He pleaded with her to speak, even before it came as far as him reaching for the assistance of Shirley's dark arts. However, she refused to mutter even a noise towards him. It wasn't until the courage reached the point of seemingly giving up himself, just like Muriel did, that she snapped out of it and realized that he needs her. Him putting himself in harm's way like that to save Muriel and the farm is definitely a massive statement about Courage's character, but it's also very symbolic of how sometimes it takes a really traumatic realization to snap out of a funk that you could be stuck in. After the problem escalating to the point of Muriel going silent and Courage almost dying, we see her in the end asserting herself and deciding that Eustace is gonna listen to her whether he likes it or not, even if that means taping his own mouth shut. Hence, making sure that this same issue never happens again. It was like a breath of fresh air at the end, seeing Muriel realize that what she says does matter, no matter what Eustace says. It's honestly a shame that Eustace doesn't realize how lucky he is to have Muriel. Throughout this episode, we never really get a point where Eustace realizes that he was in the wrong and apologizes, but that didn't stop him from getting his comeuppance in the end. Moving on from there though, I figured we better tackle a few more light-hearted parts of this episode. First of all, I feel compelled to point out how well Muriel shreds. I've never played the sitar, but it looks really hard if I'm being honest, and she's really good at it. The song she plays would be heard throughout the series multiple times, and I just love it so much. It's incredibly catchy, and it just makes me so happy. I also really have to bring up Shirley. I'm pretty sure that I've said this before, but she is such a well-written character. She's mysterious and intriguing, and they do a really good job of making me as a viewer want to learn more about her mysterious past. She just has a really interesting vibe to her, and I dig it. She's a character that I always look forward to seeing when I watch this show, though she would only appear every so often. Another thing that truly sparked joy in this episode is the part where Courage is in the basement trying to tell Muriel what's going on. I swear, some of the best parts in this show is when Courage is trying to tell people what's going on and he turns into whatever it is that he's trying to tell them. We see him turn into a big monster that's destroying the house, then he turns into Muriel's head as we hear him mimic her voice down to a T, telling Muriel exactly what she needs to do. And of course, even with that, she still has no idea what's going on in the end, and doesn't realize that it was her voice that saved the farm. Those gags just had me busting up laughing while I was planning this video. It's just too funny. One last thing that I really need to talk about is how, like I said in the beginning of this video, this episode really freaked me out as a kid. This episode is what sparked my fear of starfish, and to this day, honestly, I still really just kind of don't like them. There's just something freaky about them, and it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Thanks, Courage. Before this episode, I used to love starfish. More than anything, the depiction of the weird little tube feet just gives me the ick. Knowing that it uses those weird jelly sticks to navigate and move around just makes my skin crawl. I also hate the noises that this thing made. It honestly is just chilling to me, and I can't stand it. It's just so creepy seeing that thing not only move around and eat giant rock structures, but also seeing it shrivel up and die was just kind of gross. The noises of it dying were just abhorrent and they made me want a Ralph. However, one thing that I'm really curious about with this episode is how they pulled off balancing the sadness with creepiness. Like, this episode, in my opinion, is just as sad as it is creepy, at least coming from an adult standpoint. As a kid, I feel like I couldn't process emotion well enough to grasp just how sad this episode really was, but watching it back as an adult, I can definitely see how sad it is. What I really want to know is, 
Does the amount of creepiness detract from the amount of sadness? I know it did for me as a kid for sure, but I want to know, what do you think? Did you realize how sad this episode was when you were younger? Let me know in the comments down below, I always love seeing your guys' feedback. Massive shout out to my patrons, especially you guys in the true 90s tier, I appreciate you all more than words could ever say. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like and give some praise to the YouTube algorithm in hopes that it pushes this video to everyone else, and as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.